Hey, it's Lon Meezy again, and in today's video, I'm going to be running through some of the new gold making related features that are coming in World of Warcraft patch 8.3. Also, I'll be sharing some tips to help you get prepared for the patch, which should be especially helpful if you have yet to get your Brutal Sword mount, which is set to be retired when the next expansion, Shadowlands, comes out. Now, at first glance, there doesn't seem to be a lot of changes, especially when compared to patch 8.2 which saw a new tier of crafting materials, but in this video, I'm going to be going through not only major details but also minor things that can easily slip under the radar that you can actually get ready for and get started with when the patch goes live to help you get a head start. And before we get started with the video, consider also subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos on World of Warcraft gold making just like this one. And with that, let's get started with the video. So starting off with one of the more obscure yet significant tips is the fact that legendaries will become eligible for transmog starting from patch 8.3. And the reason that this will be a great gold making opportunity is that as the demand for these legendary weapons increases significantly, so will all the crafting materials and professions associated with them. And of all the legendaries across the many expansions that are still obtainable, the most profitable ones are Sulfurus and Thunder Fury of Vanilla WoW by far. And with that, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these legacy weapons and how you'll be able to make gold with them. And starting off with Sulfurus, the Hand of Ragnaros, you're going to need to craft a Sulfurin Hammer, which is an epic hammer that can be crafted by blacksmiths, then combine that with an Eye of Sulfurus, which has a chance of dropping off of Ragnaros. Now the plans for the hammer is actually a one-time reward from a quest, and it is buy on equip, meaning that you can also sell it on the auction house, though each character can only ever get one recipe. I happen to have done another video showing how exactly you can get it, which I'll link to in the description, but essentially to complete the quest, you'll have to get an item called the Sulfurin Ingut, which drops from the Molten Core boss Golomag the Incinerator, but it's also not buying on pickup, meaning that you can also buy or sell it on the auction house, making it potentially another valuable item you can farm. Besides that, as you can see here, crafting the hammer takes tons of materials, potentially making farming or crafting them much more worth your time than before. And the professions that benefit the most from this are definitely mining for the dark iron ore and bars as well as the other materials used for the alchemy transmutations, alchemy itself for the arcanite transmutations, which has already had quite a lucrative history even without the legendaries being moggable, and of course blacksmithing for crafting the hammer. And then there's also all the other stuff that you can farm from Molten Core itself, like the lava and fiery cores. Now, moving on to the next weapon, the infamous Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker, it primarily also involves Arcanite bars just like Sulfurus, and also Enchanted Elementium bars which miners have to learn by getting a recipe drop from the boss Master Elemental Shaper Crixus in Blackwing Layer, and also use Elementium Ingot which drops from Blackwing Layer trash in order to craft these bars. And so although the weapon itself can't be sold, these Elementium bars and especially Arcanite bars are going to see some huge demand, so I definitely recommend buying up Thor Thorium ore or bars and arcane crystals which are used for these arcanite bars right now if you see any for cheap. And as for some of the other legendaries, to my knowledge, none of the other ones really involve any significant gold making opportunities, with the possible exception of Shadowmorn of Wrath of the Lich King, perhaps making Primordial Serenite increase slightly in price. And also, one of the quests requires I think 2 or 3 people, so there could be people paying others to accompany them, which I myself actually did. And lastly, upon completion of the questline, you'll also get a bunch of cosmetic items like a mount, a couple of toys, and a tabard, all of which are bind on equip, so with these, the prices may actually go down because of more people getting the weapon. And so your primary focus for gold making with legendaries in patch 8.3 should be with Sulfurus and Thunder Fury. And now let's move on to the actual profession updates of the patch. First, the only new crafting materials that are going to be introduced with patch 8.3 are for cooking and fishing. Namely, there's only one new type of meat and two new types of fish. And each of these is obtainable in either Oldham or the Veil of Eternal Blossoms while they're being assaulted by Nazoth's forces. First, we have the Malformed Nasher from Fishing in Oldham. Then we have the Aberrant Voidfin from the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. And as for the meat, we have questionable meat from killing creatures in both zones. Now what's very interesting about the foods you can cook with these new mats is that their well-fed buffs are not your traditional stat buffs, but rather each one gives you a unique buff within the new horrific vision scenario. For example, eating baked void fin increases your movement speed by 20% within the scenario, and having the kebab actually restores 100 of your sanity. 
And with the visions being so vital in patch 8.3, since players will constantly be running it to both upgrade their legendary cloaks and to collect vanity items, these new foods will definitely see a good amount of demand, while not replacing any of the previous patches stat buffing foods including a feast. Moving on to the other new recipes, we just have the standard BOE ketchup gear and high-end BOP gear that comes with each BFA season and raid tier. Now for gold making, both the BOE gear and the materials used for both types of gear should be in demand at the start of the patch. Although similar to patch 8.2, there's also going to be gear tokens that come from doing the new content that awards gear of item levels 410 and 415, which is higher than the 400 provided by the crafted ones. However, based on personal experience and from what I've read about other people's experiences in patch 8.2, the crafted gear is usually still worth crafting, although they won't be as good as when patch 8.1 came out. And one important thing to also know is that the gear tokens don't provide weapons, which would make crafting them better than crafting armor, and that especially benefits blacksmiths. And as before, ranks 2 and 3 of these recipes can be bought for marks of honor that you get from PvP. And just one more thing is that since there will be no more titan forging, the high end BOP gear and the mats used to craft them could be especially valuable this time around. Moving on, as with the last couple of final expansion patches, selling carries will be very lucrative as well because of the mounts that are rewarded from killing heroic Nazoth, as well as completing all the mythic plus 15 dungeons respectively. If Legion and Warlords of Draenor were any indication of this, there's going to be a huge demand for these types of carries since their rewards will no longer be available come the next expansion. So if you can find a guild or a group of friends to do this with, learn all the respective fights well and gear up your character, doing carries can be an incredibly efficient way to make gold, especially if you're going to be able to carry multiple players per run. Next, I also want to quickly mention battle pets as a potential way to make gold, although they're not likely going to be as good as in patch 8.2 where people needed reputations fast to unlock essences and flying. But as before, there are going to be battle pet world quests in the new assault zones which will give you rep towards the respective factions and allow you to collect some of the new essences a bit faster. By the way, these new essences will probably come in quite handy as they also passively fortify your sanity meter within the vision scenario and whatnot. And so depending on the importance of these world quests, the pets used to defeat these encounters could see a significant increase in price as was the case in patch 8.2 and you'll be able to find out about these counters on Wowhead very soon so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. And besides the world quests, I also want to just quickly point out the new Blackrock Depths pet battle dungeon which could also have its associated gold making opportunities as well just as the previous releases did. Moving on, a small change made to Island Expeditions made it so that you can spend doubloons to buy boxes that contain random vanity items, which can include BOEs for transmog as well as pets you can sell. So if you have extra doubloons, or if for any reason you want to do more Island Expeditions, this would be an avenue for you to spend your doubloons for a chance to make a bit of gold. Now as for the items you want to be stockpiling before the patch, since there are no new crafting materials besides the two fishes and one meat, which won't even devalue the existing cooking materials due to them not providing the stat buffs needed for raids and dungeons, you essentially want to be buying up all the masks that have been relevant since patch 8.2. As usual, they will be used for crafting the new BOPs and BOEs, Consumables and their mats will stay completely the same, with jewel crafting seeing a possible boost as we'll actually be able to add sockets to our new items that drop in the new patch. Also, especially if you're going to be crafting the armor and weapons, expulsum will continue to be a major resource used to craft them, and so all the materials used to make the greens for crafting them like tight sprayed linen will continue to see demand as well. And lastly, as I've mentioned before, the materials used for the legendary weapons Sulfurous and Thunder Fury should also be viable to stockpile. Next, let's quickly go over some of the auction house changes in patch 8.3 and their possible implications. First, it will no longer matter what stack size you decide to sell in, as stackable items will now be consolidated in a way that people can just specify how many they want to buy with just one click, and they'll automatically get that full stack at the cheapest available prices. Overall, I personally think this is a good change for the game in the long run because it's user friendly, but it definitely takes away some of the gold making strategies we previously had like stacking items in more convenient sizes to entice buyers. Moving on, another change is that items you list even for the exact same price as the current lowest will be prioritized to sellers without having to undercut them by one copper or however much. Now, you can still undercut if you want to depending on the demand for a certain item and whether the other sellers are overpricing it and reposting items will still very much be a thing, which by the way would be a great reason to have a Brutosaur so that you can do so whenever and wherever you want. 
and on to what I think to be one of the most important auction house changes, and that's the fact that you'll actually be able to search for uncollected items, be it mounts, pets, toys, or even transmogable gear. Because this makes it so much easier to find items one doesn't yet have, people are definitely going to be much more frequently looking for interesting things to collect, which will give a lot more attention to these types of items, making crafting them and farming them, for example doing traditional AQ20 or Zolfarak runs, potentially a lot more profitable. And because of this, this is definitely my favorite auction house change for patch 8.3, and if I'm right about it, I'll also be sure to make a video about what you can craft and farm to take advantage of this. As for the last auction house change I want to point out, you can now also filter by items that are specifically upgrades which should benefit BOE selling whether you're crafting them or flipping the new ones that'll drop from Nyalotha. However, this could also make BOE flipping a bit more difficult as people will more easily and quickly be able to identify and buy out upgrades, but we'll just have to see how things turn out. And that is pretty much all I wanted to go over in this video regarding the patch, but before I end it off, I also want to quickly direct your attention to my other YouTube channel which I'll link in the description that I've been spending a lot of my effort on in the past few months, which is also why I took a break from this channel. So if you want to learn how to make real money online, and I've already got videos on a lot of genuinely easy and low maintenance methods, go ahead and check out my other channel, Influencer Unchained. Sometimes making real money and turning them into WoW tokens or Battle.net balance can actually be much more efficient than making it completely in-game. And even if you're not interested in that, if you just want to support me and my channels, and by the way, I just want to be clear that I'm not abandoning this Warcraft channel, I'd be incredibly thankful if you could just take a second to subscribe to both of my channels as that will help me greatly. But with that, we have reached the end of the video. If you found it helpful or liked it, consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.